There's another missing Biden diamond, and no one knows where it is. The president's brother, Jim Biden, better known as Jimmy the Chin, told congressional investigators that he threw out a diamond that the Chinese bribed Hunter with. Here's their story. The Chinese slipped Hunter Biden a diamond while his dad was vice president. Biden's brother, Jimmy, says Hunter gave him the Chinese diamond to have it appraised. But Jimmy says he threw it in the garbage. And this is the second Chinese diamond the Bidens claim they lost. The Chinese also bribed Hunter with a three-carat, $80,000 diamond in 2017 that Hunter claimed disappeared. The Bidens keep diamonds around like blacks keep cash around, right, Fanny? The Biden family was in business with part-time Chinese diamond dealers who bought $23 million worth of diamonds in a single year. I have a feeling the Bidens lost more than two diamonds. The Bidens are probably keeping it safe next to Joe's Corvette. And remember, the $1.7 million in Chinese cash that Hunter withdrew from ATMs? Also missing. Isn't it strange how all the hard evidence of bribery keeps getting lost? Even the Chinese chairman who made the bribes has disappeared. They've had so much success disappearing evidence, the magicians in the Democratic Party have another trick. They're trying to make the impeachment inquiry go poof. Here's how the magic trick works. Biden's Justice Department arrested the FBI informant who reported that both Biden's, Joe and Hunter, took bribes from Ukraine. The informant, Alexander Shmirnov, reported the bribe allegations to his FBI handler, who wrote it up in a report. They call it a 1023. The FBI deep-sixed it. But once Republicans got their hands on the report, the same prosecutor who got busted for cooking up Hunter's sweetheart plea deal arrested the informant and accused him of talking to people close to Russian intelligence. Isn't that why the FBI pays him? Because he talks to people? Former FBI agent Stuart Kaplan told us that it was only a matter of time before the informant got popped. When that 1023 form was released last year, my colleagues and I knew at that point that informant was going to be sacrificed. It was just a matter of time. That informant has been on the books since 2010, 11, 12, up until more recently. You do not stay on the books with the FBI unless you have been vetted and you are credible. Even Democrats agreed the informant was credible. There's a confidential human source that the FBI works with who has proven to be very credible who reported a conversation with someone else. But the informant may have been too credible. And now it looks like he's a straw man to discredit Biden's impeachment. MSNBC booked old spooks all day to call the Biden bribe scandal informant Russian election interference. This feels like we've been here before. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yes. it's, it's like WikiLeaks, Car Carter Page, and, and all of that rolled into one. You know, for people who maybe just have lived under a rock for the last eight years, I'll say this, as I've said it before, for Russia, the Cold War never ended. The United States is Vladimir Putin's main enemy. He's desperate, and this makes him incredibly dangerous. So why wouldn't he try to interfere with the election? Why wouldn't he try to undermine Joe Biden? It just, well, it, you know, it right. just makes total sense with everything we've seen the last eight years. Now, this time, instead of making up hoaxes to get Trump impeached, they're making them up to stop Biden from getting impeached. And are now claiming that this single FBI informant was the entire foundation of the Biden family corruption scandal. Is just one more aspect of the whole Russian misinformation campaign that so distorted our electoral processes from 2016 and going forward. The allegations seem to be the only evidence we have. What they're calling a prong of the investigation looks to be the entire foundation, and that entire foundation now may, may have been chopped away. Entire foundation? Only evidence we have? The Biden bribery scandal's four and a half years old. And its foundation was based upon eyewitness testimony like Tody Bubulinski. Hard evidence like bank records, laptops, photos of meetings, voicemails, visitor logs from the White House. Emails, texts, checks, hours of depositions, and at least two missing diamonds. We didn't find out about this FBI informant until just last summer, when Comer's investigation was well underway. The informant's allegations were very similar to allegations made by Tony Bobulinski, a decorated naval officer, 
who the FBI coincidentally has never followed up with. The informant even used the phrase, the big guy, before the laptop even went public. I guess his sources were pretty good. Senator Chuck Grassley announced that two separate Justice Department field offices, New York and Pittsburgh, found no hits to known sources of Russian disinformation. And right before Hunter's deposition with House investigators, this arrest is made, giving Democrats their fall guy and an excuse to call the entire impeachment Russia disinformation. CIA mouthpieces are all over MSNBC today, claiming the 51 letter signing Intel guys were right. Hunter's laptop was Russian disinformation. Those 51 uh, former intelligence officials, they paid a steep price for signing that letter. The Republicans said this was election interference. This was a bogus attempt to suppress a legitimate story. And as it turns out, they were right. They've been proven correct in the sense that we now know that Russian intelligence, at least according to the, uh, the statements of this informant, bolstered somewhat by this indictment, were feeding him information, false information. Tomorrow on MSNBC, Jussie Smollett. He was right all along. Robert Mueller cleared Republicans of Russia collusion, but somehow we're back to Republicans colluding with Russia just before the election. Every election, it seems, the Republicans fall in favor with the Russians. They're willing to carry any water for Trump. And I'm not sure where this kinds of now fetish for Russia ever became as well. It seems like a lot of the domestic enemies are right here serving in the House with us. The Democrats are taking the hoaxes from 2016, the hoaxes from 2020, combining them to use in 2024. Don't you see now any Republican who supports impeachment is guilty of Russia collusion? Well, let's ask an actual Russian who he prefers. You asked who would be preferred as future president of the United States. I said that we would work with any president, but I suppose that for us, for Russia, Biden is more preferable. Now, take what Putin says with a grain of salt because he's got an agenda. But if this FBI informant is feeding the FBI Russia disinformation, and that could be the case, even though two DOJ field offices said it wasn't before they flip-flopped, why'd they bury it in 2020 to help Democrats and then exploit it in 2024 to hurt Republicans? Well, according to Claire McCaskill on MSNBC, we're not even allowed to ask that question. I move that every newspaper in America quits doing any fact checks on Joe Biden until they fact check Donald Trump every morning on the front page. It is ridiculous yeah. that the New York Times fact checked Joe Biden on something. I mean, he vomits lies. Trump vomits lies. The media moves to ban fact checking of the president. That almost sounds Russian, doesn't it, Red Claire? 